one room like we have many of our seven bad middle schools. And um, so grades one to eight would be in a school like this. Now this was not a seventh day in a school, but it is where we talk about Adventist education. So, um, back in 1868, there was a man by the name of Gwendolyn Harper Bell. His wife had died, and he and his two daughters were trying to make it on their own. But you know, he, is, he got stressed out, he got sick. So he ended up having to come to the Battle Creek uh, Sanitarium uh, where Dr. John Harvey Kellogg worked to try and get well again. And part of his healing was he was supposed to uh, do exercise. And he was out chopping wood one day when uh, Willie and Henry uh, White and the Kellogg boys, Will and John, um, saw him working, so they went over and introduced themselves, and he told them that he was a teacher. And they were very excited because they needed help with their schoolwork, so he agreed to tutor them. Now, he did such a good job that James White ended up asking him to uh, start a school for the Adventist children. He started out with 12 students, and by the time half of the year went by, he had 25 students. Now, the, the publishing house that we had met in before, that was the first publishing house. They ended up building a much bigger publishing house after that, and the first publishing house became a place where a storage house. So he, James told them that if he wanted to live in the downstairs part of the building, he could have a school in the upstairs part. So that's what they agreed to do. And that was the beginning of Adventist education for which we're very grateful. I'm, a, I'm the school secretary in the yeah. zoo uh, for the Adventist school over there. And I've been there 37 years, and I love it. <laughs> so, can't shake me off with a stick. So, some of the students that went to school here were John Carter Kellogg, Will Kellogg, Henry and um, uh, Will, uh, what do they call them? White, and also someone by the name of Uriah Smith. Now here's a picture of Uriah Smith when he was an older man, but I'll tell you something that happened with Uriah Smith when he was about 12. Is there anybody here that's about 12, 12 years old? 10, 11, 13, 11, year 11? Okay, so let's say that you got a scratch on your leg, okay? And that scratch got infected. Have you ever had an infection and it kind of red and swelled a little bit? Well, they didn't have any antibiotics to help with that kind of thing. And the infection got really bad. And he ended up having to have his leg cut off. Now, back in those days, they didn't have a hospital where you could go to the hospital and where they would put a mask on your face and put a drip in your arm and put you to sleep. And then they do the surgery and you wake up and you say, ta-da. No, he had, he was awake. So oh, they took man. him, the doctor came to his house, his mother laid him on the kitchen table and the mother had to hold him down while the doctor sawed off his leg. Ooh. He sawed his leg off above his knee. It took him about 20 minutes. I could not imagine. Well, now John had a leg missing, so he had to have something to be able to walk on. So what do pirates walk on? Chains. A wooden leg, right? Oh, my leg. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, a wooden leg. So he had a wooden leg, but that wooden leg, whenever he would try to sit at these desks, he would go to sit, he'd pull that stump up, well, his leg is sticking. Straight out, so he he couldn't get underneath. He couldn't get underneath the the table. That really bothered him. So when he got older, he decided he was going to invent a leg that would bend. And first, he first he he invented um, he invented a, a chair. Now normally, can you show them how this? 
does the seat go up? Can you show them? This goes up this way, right? Well, that didn't help John. So John decided he was going to present the table where the seat, the back of the seat went up. So that made it so that he could slide in and then he could sit. And then he could Thank you, Uriah. 